Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're looking at how I made the troop summoning stump. This is for the mobile game Atlas Empires which I've been involved in and made most of the models for um, all the sort of buildings and some of the icons and so forth. If you want to learn more about that then do check out the playlist in the description. Also there's lots of playlists on my channel for free courses about how I do certain things so do check those out. A hugely important part of this process is having some drawing ability so if you want to learn how to draw then check out my new Kickstarter. You can learn to draw creating game art. So I started all off with a cylinder, a fairly low poly cylinder, and then start extruding the pieces out. I was thinking about starting off with a mirror and maybe just sort of mirroring it and then adapting it, but I thought it'd be better to try and keep some separation between the pieces so they don't look too uniform. I did copy this one across just because I thought that would be quicker. But for the back pieces and side pieces, I just did them all separately. It was just a case of extruding the lower pieces out and then in top view, looking down upon them, making sure they're in a nice comfortable position, sorting out where the door was going to be or the old passageway or whatever you might want to call this thing. And all these I would say are fairly basic polygon modeling techniques, nothing too exceptional. If you need to know more about that, then you can look at my Get Good at Blender series. And it goes into far more depth than is needed in this particular model. So uh, you'll find it quite easy if you can follow along with that. So once I've got the basic sort of tree trunk and then I fill in the top and bottom, you can see I deleted those faces beforehand so they wouldn't get in the way and then just extrude and fill in that face in the middle there. Then adding those sort of character elements, a few rocks around the place. The original concept art I got from Chris, I modified slightly and passed back to him sort of thing with some ideas. That's why it's helpful to have some 2D experience, drawing experience, so you can pass ideas back and forth with other artists. And he liked the new ideas, so uh, we went with that. Uh, it had a bit more sort of shape and form and character. Um, so, uh, and I've, uh, being the 3D modeler, you know what you're capable of and so you can push those boundaries a bit further. You can see these sort of small notches as well, those sort of character elements. It's sometimes difficult to know whether you should model those in or um, actually just texture them. If they're quite big and chunky and they're on the edge of the silhouette, then you're going to be wanting to model them most of the time. So that's actually putting them into the geometry. Uh, whereas some things, so let's say there's a big hole in your um, object, you can sometimes just paint those holes in. Um, it depends again whether it's going to be seen from different angles and uh, the deeper the hole is the more likely you are to have to model it and the shallower the hole the more likely you are to actually paint it. So the rocks here you can see they're just icospheres that are adapted slightly. I push them against the trunk so as if the trunk, um, sorry the um, roots are growing around the rock so that you've got some sort of idea of it being very organic and growing over them. And then I can delete faces as well and I don't have to draw so much of the rock. Um, a lot of the time with these things, I would be uh, copying that rock and uh, moving it around and duplicating it. But this time it's quite nice with these objects. I can be quite free and I don't have those constraints of having to repeat objects. When you have to repeat objects, you have to think very carefully about the shading you put on them because you might want to rotate it or put it up against something else. And then you can't have any shading because if you're going, going to rotate it, then the light is gonna come from a different direction and that will look odd. So um, things can look very flat if you're repeating them a lot. So in my other models uh, for Atlas Empires, uh, sometimes it looks a bit flat and you have to really work hard to try and stop that from happening. So it's again really nice not to have to repeat any shapes. I did, I suppose I did uh, repeat the sword that was so obviously a repetition uh, that I thought I might as well, but it does limit you because again, you can't have the shadows. So it was a bit of an issue, but uh, not a great deal because it's quite a small object in the scene and it's very small when it goes onto your mobile phone and things because these of course are mobile game assets. Lots of people get confused about the overlapping geometry. That's absolutely fine. If you need to overlap geometry, it's not going to cause any problems in game as Atlas Empires is up and running and it's not a problem at the moment. But you do want to keep it to a minimum. You don't want to overlap too much because it's a waste of resources and you certainly don't want any hidden faces. There's no point in those. I kept a bit of the UV app unwrapping in because I thought that might be helpful. There is an option to select and then overlap to check whether anything's overlapping and you can uh, map the islands from a automatic unwrap, the smart UV unwrap. So I did that and then just tidied it up. That's a nice quick way of doing things. So you do the smart UV project and then you um, 
say you want those islands, you set those islands in the UV image editor, and then you go back in and edit them slightly and then re-unwrap. Uh, and then you get less things like overlap and confusion, <laughs> and it just models out a bit nicer. But it's a lot quicker than going around. So when I start off the texture painting, I fill in some block colors, and I think I missed a bit of the recording. I made a mistake somewhere along the line and just didn't record for some particular reason. But you can see the style and technique that I'm using here. I'm trying to keep the grain of the wood going in one direction so it sort of flows around the trunk rather than just straight upwards. That's quite unusual in trees that it goes straight upwards with an old gnarly trunk like this. The uh, more sort of flowing it is going around the trunk and twisting, uh, the older it looks. That's what I felt like anyway when I was looking at reference images. It's always really difficult to know how far and detailed to go. I could have spent far more hours on this uh, making it look very detailed, but it really is pointless when you've got a mobile asset that's going to be seen, even on a fairly big tablet, let's say. Um, you're still going to be uh, zoomed out, as it were. Uh, you're never going to get this close, really. Um, so there's, there's very little point in all that detail. That's something that has speeded up my workflow, finally seeing the game assets in-game and playing the game a little bit uh, has helped me to really see how detailed I need to go with the painting. So um, it's certainly speeded up a lot because I can think, well, I don't need that detail and uh, I don't have to worry about it so much. Once I got the basic wood and bark down, I decided to do some moss in there as well. I just felt like it would add, again, more character to uh, the whole model and uh, yeah, and make it feel like it was uh, really old and worn and weathered. I did that by putting down a base color of a dark green and then doing a really sort of light speckled green over the top. And I did that with a simple texture. So I think it was a noise texture on my brush and just painted over the top and it was nice and straightforward and simple. Now I'm going around just highlighting uh, by doing using the multiply brush and then the highlight brush, uh, the screen brush to pull out the um, extremities and push in the cavities and so forth. Uh, when I'm doing sort of sharp edges, I say sharp edges, but the stone um, edges, um, I do like to go back to the principal BSDF. Most of the time I'm uh, using the color plugged into an emission shader. So you press Control Shift with the node wrangler installed and you get the emission shader. Uh, but sometimes I go back to the principal shader so I can see the edges, um, so I can draw the edges in the correct location and then just switch between the two. And you occasionally see me doing that in the shader editor up in the top left. Again, adding a bit of moss around the uh, sort of walkway into uh, this tree stump. Another problem you might come across and something I always seem to uh, battle with is getting the right uh, value between objects. So uh, not making the stairs into this tree stump too bright, not making the rocks too bright. And a nice handy tip for that is using the fill brush and the multiply or screen just to change the level slightly to bring it in uh, to where everything else is as well. That is one problem when you have different separate objects that you're painting, you're jumping from one to the next. Uh, so you end up adding quite a lot of detail on the first and then going to the second and it doesn't have that same uh, feeling or value, like I say, the value being the brightness or the darkness of the object. Uh, so yes, you can just go to the fill brush and use um, the multiply or the screen, depending on whether you want to make it lighter or darker. Uh, changing the colour very slightly as I go up uh, with the highlights of the moss there, uh, giving a sort of yellowy tint. Uh, it does make a difference if you're uh, making things darker or brighter. Sometimes changing the hue very slightly, uh, as in the colour, um, will help you to um, get it sort of a bit more realism to it. And you can see that I build up the details slowly, so um, those minor details on the rocks, sort of like dinks in there and so forth, or little cracks, uh, those are done last. Um, you've got to get all the base uh, painting done first, so the colour down, the colour variations and so forth, and then do those tiny details on top. Not particularly pleased with the shield and the swords. You can see here, when I'm close in, they don't look that great, but um, again, it's uh, spending too much time. You've got to be careful. You don't want to uh, waste time uh, with these objects. There's lots of objects to paint, uh, and I don't want to upset people by spending hours on them. And there's time constraints, so these people need the models. They need the upgrades to the game and so forth. As the game is uh, running at the moment, we need these are all sort of upgrades to it. 
Uh, so I need to be quick. So trying not to spend too long uh, on each uh, model is important and getting the right amount of time management working uh, is absolutely critical. But you can see I needed to spend more time on this sword. Uh, but uh, then I, when I zoomed out, well, I felt like I needed to spend more time on this sword, certainly. But when I zoomed out, I thought, actually, it's got too much detail. Um, I can make this a bit simpler. And just uh, it, from a distance, it looked absolutely fine. So uh, stop fussing is what I thought. You can see the highlights are far too bright initially, though, uh, compared to the rest of the object. It took me a while to figure that out because I had it isolated here. Uh, and uh, sometimes you just get a bit blind to it. Uh, and then suddenly uh, you take a, a small break, come back to it and think, oh, yeah, see what's going wrong here. It is important to take uh, regular breaks uh, because you, you really do get blind to your drawings and maybe jump between objects now and again as well uh, because when you come back to it um, you suddenly notice those errors that you've made. That's uh, the, an alternative almost to flipping the canvas uh, that people do when they're uh, doing sort of 2D artwork. Uh, flipping the canvas, suddenly your eyes look at it in a different way and you see all the errors. And it's quite astounding really uh, <laughs> with the errors that you make that you think are absolutely fine whilst you're drawing. Uh, the Color Dodge brush is fantastic for doing metal. You can really see it sort of glows a bit. Uh, I really like that brush, um, or that blending mode, I should say, or brush mode, whatever you might want to call it. Uh, it helps a lot. So you can see there, the finished piece, I just darken them slightly because, yes, the highlights were just a bit too bright, and then start putting a bit of shading on. And when you get close in, it doesn't look great, but from a distance, it doesn't look too bad. So I thought that will do. I don't want to spend, like I say, too long and would never see it from this sort of close-up distance anyway. So there it is, the final image. And again, we're seeing it quite close here, so you can see all those inaccuracies. But it's important not to spend too long on them because you are just wasting time if you do, unless you're trying to do some sort of amazing portfolio piece, of course. But uh, for mobile game assets, you really have to consider uh, the distance you're looking at it. So uh, from this distance, you can probably see a few inaccuracies, like I say. But uh, really pleased with how it came out and looking forward to seeing it in the game. So hopefully this is helping you. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.